Hey guys, I'm Pfreak, welcome back to Pokemon White version. Last time we went around the Unova region to see what we had access to, now that we had access to Surf, Fly, Rock Smash, Strength, and Waterfall, all those various HMs. And we also found out about the story of the legendary Swords of Justice, and then Cod Cabalion and Verizion of the Swords of Justice. In this part, we are back here in Icerus City, where we are going to finally explore the city, as well as possibly actually attack the gym. Alright, so, let us begin. We already talked about the Brick Break that you can get with from the Lady of the Pokemon Center, but there are also a bunch of hidden items around the city as well. I should mention that this city actually differs in the wintertime. In the wintertime, these little patches of water here will actually freeze over and allow you to actually walk over them. There's also, if you go right here, this little, like, hole here or something. This will be filled up with snow and allow you to actually cross over to it. So because of that, there's some things that are locked behind these areas because it's not well snowing. So, yeah. Also, this area is home to some Pokemon that you can find if you just walk through the water. Because of that, you're going to want to have a Super Repel or something on you. I need to buy more Super Repels, I just realized. Look at that. We spent a whole lot of Super Repels last time. Alright. There should be an item right here. Yes, a Max Revive. Perfect. Then if we go over here, I believe it's actually if we go up here and then go all the way over here. Then right here, we have an Ultra Ball. And to the right of us is a Tyrant Ball. Nice. Unfortunately, those are all the hidden items we can get right now. If we, again, if it's filled winter, we could get the items over there, but unfortunately we cannot. So I'm gonna actually turn my dancing machine off so that doesn't bug us. Also, yes, with the dynamic music, with these guys dancing, you actually hear clapping added to the music. So that's nice. Over here, we have the fans of everything Pokemon, the Pokemon fan club. Oh, I should fit right in then. They always have this like Pokemon fan club thing and it's kind of funny because like true Pokemon fans, like really hardcore Pokemon fans are kind of scary. <laughs> I am the chairman who loves Pokemon, the most among Poke fans in the entire world. I'm sure you do. If you are a trainer, will you show me how you are raising your Pokemon with loving care? Oh, which Pokemon will you show me? Oh, so yes, I went and fought all the trainers that are around the area that we ignored before, so... I'm gonna show Borealis. Oh, this Ember was level 5 when you first met, but now it's level 40. You've raised it well. You must be affectionate. And he gives us another experience share, which is yay, I think. That is a token of gratitude for showing me your great love for your Pokémon. So, this guy will actually give you different items depending on how many levels the Pokémon had gained since you obtained it. If it's a... and it also has to be a Pokémon specifically from a Generation 5 game. So, if you show a Pokemon that has gained between 25 and 49 levels since it was first met, then you'll get an experience share. From 50 to 98 levels, it'll be a cleanse tag, which is that item I mentioned earlier, which if the first Pokemon in your party is holding it, then it reduces the amount of wild Pokemon you encounter. It doesn't permanently remove them, you still have to use a repel for that. Um, and then finally, if you if the Pokemon has gained 99 levels, which means that if you bred a Pokemon, hatched it, and then made it go to level 100, then you get a King's Rock. King's Rock is an item where if the Pokemon is holding it, then all its, mo its attacking moves, I believe it's moves that make contact, have a chance to actually make the Pokemon flinch. Also, some Pokemon need the King's Rock in order to evolve. So, yeah, that's basically all you can do there. And actually, I think that's... Wait, there's one more thing we can do here, I think. I just need to remember where it is. Welcome to Pokemon Fan Club. Shall I check how friendly your Pokemon is towards you? Oh, we actually have the friendship checker here. This wasn't what I was thinking of, but... Oh my, your Ember is super friendly to you. I'm a bit jealous. So yeah, this is the friendship checker. This allows you to actually have an in-game way of telling whether or not your Pokemon has high happiness slash friendship. So moves like Return or Evolutions that require high happiness slash friendship, you can figure it out uh, through there. Hi, this way, please. Uh, this is weird. Exciting, thrilling, zippy, chilling, it's pep quiz. Pep quiz? Today's challenger is this person. Hiya, welcome. Pep quiz starts now. Answer lots of quizzy questions and watch your brain get brainier. Let's start with a question. Good luck. A question. What is the Sky Squirrel Pokemon that has huge ears? Uh, Imulga? Oh my, it's tremendously difficult. Can the challenger answer this? Hint. H-I-N-T, H-I-N-T. Oh, the audience is asking for a hint. Okay, I'll give you a hint. Hint, it's part flying type. Well, yeah, no shit, it's flying squirrel. Ahaha, ah, this is a good hint. Challenger, please answer. What is a sky squirrel Pokemon that has huge ears? Uh... Emolga, I'm assuming? Uh, do we... We should have Emolga on here. Uh, yeah, Emolga. Uh, confirm. 
Woohoo! That is C R O C. <sighs> wow. C O R R E C T. Correct. You go. Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. Good hustle. Congratulations. Now this prize. It's an antidote. Uh, thanks. Weirdos. Exciting, thrilling, zippy, chilling. That's pep quiz. See you tomorrow. Okay, so I guess you just go and visit this family of a bunch of game show hosts, I guess. Um, if you answer the quiz correctly, you'll get an antidote. If you get answer it incorrectly, you get a paralyzed heal, so... Cool, I guess. Nothing really all that special. That was the only thing I really wanted to talk about. But finally, without further ado... At least as long as we've actually gone without having to go to a gym. What, it was two episodes? We went through Twist Mountain and then we did all the surfing stuff? Yeah, it's gym time. Oh, I forgot to go and talk to the gym guy. Ah, give me the fresh water. Thank you. Ice can be melted with fire or shared with fighting. Or you might want to smash it to dust with rock or steel. Yeah, basically, ice really sucks defensively. The only thing it resists is ice itself, which I think is really dumb. I think it should at least also resist water as well. That'd make it a bit more useful, because it kind of... Does it make sense? I mean, I know water itself resists ice, but in my head it makes sense for um, it to also resist for ice to also resist water. Maybe it's just me though. All right. So yeah, this is a simple ice puzzle. It's kind of a bit more unique since you actually have these different ice, this different like slidey turns you get to go around instead of just going in a straight line. So I'll give the credits for being a bit unique. Also, we get to hop over these ramps, and that's incredibly dangerous because that pit. Who knows if it's bottomless or not? All right. Just do this and do this, if I recall. Yes. I've already followed the train trainers here, obviously, so we're just gonna go immediately to the gym leader. Which is kind of weird because this is like the least involved gym leader so far. We've at least found um, most of the other gym leaders like ahead of time. Besides maybe at the first gym leaders, but still. Yeah, it's this guy. You appear ready to face the gym leader, then bring it. Again, least involved gym leader. He barely gives us any hits about his personality, except that he looks kind of like a weird ninja or something. Alright, well, this is Leader Brayson. He is Ice-type Pokemon. And this is honestly going to be a cakewalk. At this point, like I said, Ice-types really suck defensively. And in this mirror fight, mirror battle, we have the advantage here because we have Flash Cannon. Yeah, Ice-types are also weirdly weak to Flash Cannon. I don't get that. I Maybe it's because of a lot of his tools that are... Oh. Wow. That is actually... Uh, oh yeah, that's right. Vanilla shiz, the vanilla line is actually kind of especially defensive, so that makes sense. You were strong, no, because you, you and your Pokemon are strong. We could, of course, actually bring out uh, Borealis as well. I might actually do that, but you know what? I have. I need to get some level ups on Neo anyway, so. Alright. You know what? I'm gonna switch over to Borealis just so Borealis has some time in the sun. Especially now that we have Brick Break, we should actually probably use that. So, what was the last time we used, we used Borealis in the uh, normal type gym? And technically, we also used Borealis in the uh, first gym as well, but couldn't really do much there because, well, it was a water-type gym that we had to face in result. Uh, I think Brick Break will do more because he, Bear Take, I imagine, has a similar weight class as as Embor, so yeah, easy. All right, we're finally at his last Pokemon already, which is Cryogonal. Kind of a weird-looking Pokemon. Extreme conditions really test to train you. Uh, oh yeah, I also trained Rock Slide on the Borealis. I went and edited a whole bunch of uh, moves, uh, a few of the move sets. I actually have specific move sets in, si in mind for everyone. Um, so I replaced Rollout with Rock Slide because that's just going to be more reliable than Rollout. So yeah, Borealis is literally made to absolutely obliterate Ice types. And like that, we're done. Nice. A wonderful combination of you and your Pokemon. What a beautiful friendship. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In honor of your stout heart, I will give you this. And we finally get the uh, seventh gym badge. What is it? The frost freeze badge? Frozen badge? Something like that? It's something to do with freezing, if I recall correctly. Yes, the freeze badge. You have seven badges. That means Pokemon up to level 80 will be. This TM will convey my regards for your accomplishments. And we get TM 79 Frost Breath, which is an okay move, I guess. A move that always results in a critical hit, Frost Breath. It's kind of interesting. Like, it's a really unique sort of aspect, especially considering um, we have not seen a move that would always crit since Generation 1. Back in Generation 1, crits were determined on speed, and those that, um, moves that had a high critical strike chance, they were kind of like, always, they would always crit if they were put on Pokemon with high critical chance in general. B-Freak, I've been talking with Bianca and wondering, since we've left New Viewman Town, has something about me changed? 
thinking about what I want to do, thinking about what I should do, I felt like there was nothing. Or have I really become stronger? Or is it just my Pokemon that have? I don't know anymore. Hey, hey, cheer up, Sharon. Isn't it nice to see everyone? Be freak, you know what? This time I'll go to the Pokemon fan club. I'm really searching for what I want to do and what I can do. Who are you? Who? Us? I'm Bianca and this is Sharon. I know you're there. Why don't you show yourselves? Oh. Hello. Impressive, gym leader of Icerus City. We, the Shadow Triad, are beings of shadows, and not easily noticed. Our mission was to speak only with Peafreak, but so be it. Getsis has a message for you. Come to the Dragon Spiral Tower. It is there that our Lord N waits for you. Now, our mission is complete. Dragon Spiral Tower? What's going on? Hey, tell me! Now hang on! Young man, if you're here for a gym challenge, hang on for a bit. I gotta head to Dragon Spiral Tower. Ah, this is the part where the gym leader actually gets involved in the story. Awesome. I'm going too. Dragon Spiral Tower is to the north here, right? Uh, okay, I'll tag along in a moment. Bianca, are you gonna come with us? Oh, well, what should I do? For now, I have to go to Dragon Spiral Tower. Okay, I'm heading north. I guess that's the implication that we all gotta head north. Alright, so be it. Alright, so this route's also interesting. You notice that there's tall grass there, up on the cliff there. Again, if it's winter time, then you're able to actually access that, but otherwise you can't. Also, I think Saucebuck can be found here, and in the winter time, it'll be found in its uh, wintry form. Oh, hi, Cedric. Hey, Pea Freak. Oh. Bianca, are you coming along, finally? Oh, Pea Freak. And you must be Bianca. I'm the other Professor Juniper. Professor Juniper who gave me my po the Pokedex is my daughter. Nice to meet you, Professor. Thanks to Professor Juniper, I mean, I believe her name is Aria, Professor Juniper? I'll put it on screen if I'm wrong. I got to go on a journey and start figuring out the possibilities for my life. I'm very, very grateful to her. Is that right? Grand, grand. Actually, we should chat later. P Freak, Bianca, here's the situation. Some members of Team Plasma, quite a large group, broke through the tower wall and went inside. Preston and the young man, I believe his name is Sharon. The two of them went after Team Plasma, but... Professor, what's the Dragon Spiral Tower? <laughs> I guess you would be curious. Well, I'll explain briefly. Dragon Spiral Tower has stood tall since long before you know it was found. On the top floor, the legendary Dragon-type Pokemon waits for a person seeking the truth to appear. That's what it said. Are you going to go after Team Plasma like your friend did? It's admirable of you to join the fight against Team Plasma, but it's risky too. Don't worry, Beef and Sharon are both really, really strong, and they've beaten Team Plasma before, but I'm not all that strong, actually. I admit it, I'm not very strong, so I was thinking it would be nice if maybe I could stay here and be your bodyguard? Why, thank you, that makes me feel much safer. Well, Peefreak, it's up to you to climb the tower. This is all I can give you, but it might help you rest. He gives us an old gateau. What, you're giving us freaking cake to help us rest? Okay then. Still, what could Team Plasma be after? So if I remember correctly, gateau is supposed to be like French for cake or whatever, but in game, it's an item that is basically a full heal. Hello? Earlier, the gym leader went up to the tower. If you're lucky, you might witness a legend. Are you talking about the gym leader or what's going on upstairs? <coughs> Hello? Oh yeah, there are wild Pokemon here. I forgot about that. Well, welcome to the Dragon's Pearl Tower. Ironically enough, that's not a Dragon-type Pokemon. So if you try coming through here before you actually fight the gym leader, then you'll be... There, the, um, there won't be a wall broken down. It'll be completely closed off, so... Yeah. Also, this is the one place where you can actually find the Pokemon Dredgegon, which is kind of an underwhelming Pokemon, to be honest. But it's notable because of one, it has a supposedly really ugly shiny, and also it's like one of the weakest dragon Pokemon to exist. But it's still a dragon type Pokemon, so. Is, is something going wild at the top of the tower? Hey! I thought we were a silent protagonist, but nope, we actually have inner thoughts. Be freak. You can walk on the fallen columns, too. I'm going after Team Plasma. Uh, we'll catch up. We could use strength to actually just cut through right here, but uh, we don't have our strength there with us, so I guess we gotta cross the columns. Oh, there's an item here too, anyways. A hyper potion. I'll take it for you, hyper potion. But yeah, on the subject of Dredgegon's shiny, I actually kind of like the shiny. I know it's weird having a blue and red Pokemon turn into orange and green, but uh, I kind of like it. Green's kind of my favorite color, so. We've got Stardust there. We'll definitely sell that later on. Moving on forward. Ah, uh, we have these puzzles. These puzzles, basically, you need to figure out which path you need to take, because otherwise you cannot actually go back after you jump over the ledge. This is the path that will take us to the item over there. The top path leads us to nothing. This path will take us to the item, which is Shiny Stone, which will help us evolve uh, Minchino into Chinchino. And then, running over here. Oh, we need to find a repel on. There are no hidden items around here, if I recall correctly, so you don't need to have your dowsing machine out if you don't want to. And this path will actually take us to the next staircase. 
which leads us to the next floor. Kind of a tall tower, geez. Oh, here's old Team Plasma, I guess. P-Freak, we'll hold him here. You go on ahead. Okay. There's nothing, but there sure are a lot of them. Oh, what a complete bother. Okay, we get it. You're Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, all right. If I have to lose, at least it's to the gym leader. Right now, our king is upstairs. There's nothing you could do. Are you sure about that? All right, there are a bunch of Team Plasma grunts around here. We got to fight, so I'm going to fight them real quickly. Oh, so how does this guy actually know Bryson and Sharon's name? I don't get it. While battling Team Plasma, Elizabeth finally grew to level 40 and is finally evolving. And we get Jellicent. Jellicent's kind of a weird Pokemon. I mentioned it earlier when we ran into one beforehand, but... Yeah, admittedly, it's kind of a weird-looking Pokemon. We have an item over here. A Dragon Fang. I believe that boosts Dragon-type moves by 20%. So that's pretty nice. Is that all the... Yep, that's all the Plasma Grunts for now. Nice. Good timing, actually. So with Elizabeth fully evolved, that means that we only have one more evolution left to go, and that's, um, Neo. Neo, unfortunately, doesn't evolve till level 47, if I recall, so... Yeah, it's gonna be a while before Neo can actually evolve, but... They'll definitely evolve before we manage to have to encounter the champion and all that stuff, so... It won't be too long, hopefully. Alright, we got some items right here. Got a star piece. Nice, could always use some more money. Hop over this. We go down to this. I think this is another uh, showcase of the 3D capabilities of the DS. Stardust, nice. Yeah, I like how, I think I mentioned this before, but they basically said that everything that wasn't a like Pokemon sprite or character sprite was all gonna be a 3D model. And so in this game, compared to um, Diamond and Pearl, where there was still some 2D uh, flat sprite stuff, but there was also a lot of just 3D models in there as well, which is nice to actually see the evolution of gaming like that. We actually have handheld 3D stuff, oh boy. And then of course with 3DS, everything's a 3D model. Bird, baby bird. Sound like something is on the rampage at the top of the tower. Yeah, it sounds like something's definitely shaking the tower. This is a really tall ass tower. I mentioned it before, but Jesus. It's a miracle this thing hasn't been knocked down before. Oh, it's finally time. Our Lord End to become a hero. Ah, uh, you're another one of the seven sages, guys. What? Someone made it clear up here. Now, stop that trainer for our Lord End. Oh, wait, you're not going to stop me yourself? Nope, you're going to make all your grunts do it. Everyone who is a Team Plasma is an enemy. Use all your power to take them out. No one can interfere with you know his new dawn. Uh, sure, whatever you say, buddy. I'll take care of these guys real quickly. I don't understand. Why do you keep trying so hard? Well, we're we'll let you through for now. Yeah, these guys are pretty easy. If you have a fighting type with you, they're kind of a piece of cake because they have a lot of dark types and also watch hogs, so... Uh, I need to heal my Pokemon, though. Poor little York is poisoned and almost dead, so... All right, now that everyone's situated, what do you have to say? The hero will open up a way to the new world, which means you trainers can prepare to lose all your Pokemon. What the hell is your name? Yellow or something like that? God, why can't you guys just have a normal fucking name? And I recognize that green hair. Oh boy. What do you think, Beefreak? How do you like the beautiful form of Pokemon who appears before and fights besides the hero that will lead the way to a new world? Now Rushroom and I will head to the Pokemon League and defeat the champion. This will be the last of the Pokemon battles that will hurt Pokemon so. A world for Pokemon alone. It will finally be a reality. Uh, and didn't it just leave you? If you want to stop me, you must become a hero as well. That's right, when Rushram's counterpart Zekrom recognizes you, we finally be even, and then you can try to stop us. Well, what will we do? My prediction? If the future that I see is true, you'll meet Zekrom. The Pokemon that will believe in you so strongly. Will he be the one who interferes with my formula for changing the world? If you want to protect the bonds between Pokemon people, you must search for Zekrom. Yeah, I'm sure it's waiting for you in the form of the Dark Stone. Uh... Okay, first of all, how the hell is N recognized as a hero? So far, he's done nothing but be villainous. P-Freak, did you see what just flew off? How could this happen? Why? That guy was- that was the end- the guy end, right? Why is he with the legendary Pokemon? He couldn't really be the hero, could he? 
Also, did I hear him tell you to search for the other legendary Pokemon? Calm down. First, we go back. It's more important to decide what to do next than analyze what just happened. Words to live by, honestly, because I over obsess about things I just... like, just, just happened before. Jesus Christ. Astounding. I never would have imagined the legendary Dragon-type Pokemon would return now. A guy called N. Team Plasma's boss apparently reawakened the legendary Pokemon. Still briefly to look for the other legendary Pokemon, then flew away. Huh? There are two legendary dragon type Pokemon? Well, yeah, it's called black and white. There are naturally gonna be two legendary Pokemon. Yes, yes there are. What the hell? Oh, hi Alder. How's it going? Why, if it isn't Alder, it's been a while. How have you been well? Now talk for chit chat. That fearsome column of fire that shot from the tower. That Pokemon has the power to destroy the world. If it's on Team Plasma's side, and Team Plasma tells everyone to release their Pokemon. No matter whether it comes from fear or admiration, the world can't help but change. It'll be become a world where we are separated from Pokemon. I mean, granted, I just finished my playthrough of Legend Arceus where, yeah, Pokemon and humans are kind of separated to begin with, so it's not that bad of a thing. Right. Moreover, the boss of Team Plasma, N, who reawakened Reshiram, apparently said to look for the other Pokemon in Zekrom. I remember the myth, Freshman's fiery breath, along with that other Pokemon, devastated the ancient Unova in an instant. Even knowing that, and is still waiting to awaken the other? Huh? Is it dangerous to bring back Pokemon that powerful? Miss, you are a very kind person. Still, I don't know if the other Pokemon will be able to stand up to it, because no matter what, it is a legendary being. I don't like the idea of taking orders from N, but searching for the dragon, the stone, might not be a bad plan. We certainly can't let Team Plasma reawaken both of them. Since I've traveled all over Unova, I have an idea of where it might be. Let's head to the Relic Castle. P Freak, everyone, I'm going. I see. We'll leave you we'll leave that to you. I'm going to investigate inside the tower. Hopefully I'll find something. Then I will go with you. Alright. Uh so I guess we're headed to the Relic Castle again. Or Relic Tower, whatever the hell. I think I understand better now. Being able to do something for Pokemon. For somebody at a time like this is strength, I'm sure of it. My strength is something that I, that is given to me by Pokemon. Okay, champion, let's hurry. The champion has a name, you know. Can't you guys just, like, fly over there? That's what I would do. Pea freak this has turned into a big deal. So confusing. I don't know what to do. Are you going to go to Relic Castle, Pea freak Pass Route 4 in the Desert Resort. Or that's where Relic Castle is. I think I mentioned that we were going to come back to the Relic Castle eventually. It's where we basically found the stone to um, revive uh, Icarus. That's his name. All right, but with that all said and done though, I think this is a good place for us to stop. We explored around Icerus City, we got our seventh gym badge, then we had an encounter with N and Team Plasma in the Dragon Spiral Tower, and now we're told we need to head over to Relic Castle in order to find the other legendary Pokemon, or at least a stone that has the other legendary Pokemon. So that'll be it for now. If you like what we do, subscribe to my channel, follow me on social media links. All that will be in the description. Next time, we're gonna head on over to Relic Castle and hopefully find Zekrom. I'll see you guys then.